Hey guys, how you doing? I'm HexDSL, and today I want to talk about Nia Automata. This is a game that's been out since 2017, and I've wanted to play it pretty much since then, but unfortunately, it was a game that was Windows only. And before Proton slash SteamPlay slash DXVK was a thing that we could use with one click, it was something I didn't want to spend £40 to find probably didn't work. But once all that stuff did happen, and I heard it worked rather well in Linux, I simply shopped around for a deal and eventually found it for just shy of £18 on Green Man Gaming. And since that time, I've played 27.9 hours of it. I've played through the entire game three times and I recently started a fourth playthrough. The game is wonderful. It's just magical. Now, it is a part of a series of games. Um, the previous one, I think, was on the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation 2. Um, but this game is very much stands alone. I was happy to play it through. And although I'm sure that I would be enriched by the other games, this game feels like it stands aside from that. and It, it, it is something that can be played on its own. I enjoyed it so much. Uh, I finished the first playthrough and literally went to the menu and hit the button to start again. And the reason I did that was because each consecutive playthrough after the first one changes things just a little bit in ways that I don't really want to go into because I think it may be a spoiler for you. But I played it three times and it was only on the third time I played through that I felt like I'd finished the game. And honestly, there's so much I missed through those playthroughs. Because while I don't think I rushed my playthroughs, I think I could have taken my time. And had I known how wonderful the third playthrough is going to be, I would have seriously taken more time over the first two to make sure I'd got the most out of this world and out of this story. The game follows a character called 2B, uh, who is on Earth after a war has happened. All the humans are hiding out on the moon and it's the androids' jobs to make Earth safe for them. And the androids are fighting the machines. The machines are the product from alien invasion. The game continually subverts expectations and while I don't think it has twists as such, we're not talking M. Night Shyamalan level of twists here, but it does subvert your expectations and it does have a, a knack almost for redirecting the player. Uh, you'll be looking at one thing and then you'll be, oh, hold on, I missed that over there. And, you know, and that's I mean, very much from a story point of view as well as a gameplay point of view. There's a lot going on in this game. I feel like the best way of describing it would be to say it has a lot of moving parts. Now, I realize all these things I say are a little bit vague and the reason for that is I just think that I had such a wonderful experience because I went into the game knowing pretty much nothing. All I knew was you best to play it a couple of times to get the most out of it. And that is absolutely true. But that runs the risk of being really chorish. I don't feel like the game was chorish. In fact, when I finished my first playthrough, the second one introduced some mechanics that were different enough that made me thrilled to play through it all again in this different way. And then the third playthrough is something entirely different, which I do not want to describe at all. The game, for the most part, though, is a third-person brawler. And if you don't like third-person brawlers, you're probably not going to like this. And it's a third-person open-world brawler, which turns off a lot more people. But honestly, it is done, rather than being a game that decides to simply be an open-world brawler, the open-world brawler was the only way you could do the game justice because it allows you to experience at your own pace it allows you to indulge in the combat if that's what you like it allows you to indulge in the missions if that's what you like do all the side missions or just rush to the end it really does lend itself well to the genre it is and i say that loosely because it does change to a third person bullet hell shooter or <laughs> it does or a side on platform at one point it changes what it is by the use of moving that camera angle and that's wonderful and while i think you have to at least enjoy all these different types of games that it becomes as you play through. I don't think you have to love them because the game as a whole is something much larger than these individual pieces. Um, the plot is wonderful and towards the end of my second playthrough I literally had a lump in my throat. I was like, I, was, I had emotions, I had feelings while playing this game which came as quite a shock to me more than anyone else and then the third playthrough I felt like it broke me a little bit. When I finished I had to, I had to like have a little moment, I had to like just sit there and have a little cup of tea and calm down because the things I'd seen just like was so wonderful and it's very rare for a game to suck me in like this to spend 27 odd hours within, a, within what two weeks? I don't think it's even two weeks. To spend 27 hours pretty much without playing anything else or getting distracted is something wonderful for me but i know what you're thinking i can bang on about the game all i want but how does it run well the simple truth is that this game doesn't run great on windows either 
if you want ambient occlusion, you can't have anti-aliasing or vice versa. The game doesn't tell you that though, it simply starts running at 6 frames a second if you activate both. I played without anti-aliasing and with ambient occlusion, and the game run between 45 and 60 frames a second all the time. The cutscenes are rendered at 30 frames a second, which is not a deal breaker for me, but I did not feel like it performed badly. That said, I did find myself, once I turned anti-aliasing off and ambient occlusion on, I felt like the game looked less than stellar. So I weirdly, I lowered the resolution to 1600 by 900 and then just full screened the game on a 1080p monitor and it actually looked better because of the softening that was going on than it did at 1080p without anti-aliasing. So these are all weird decisions I made and I've, again, played a lot of the game so it's not like it was anything that stopped me playing. But I think uh, I've been told as well that, that the performance will vary on hardware. Like if you've got a particularly powerful CPU, you might have less problems. If you're on AMD, you'll have different problems to what I had on Nvidia. So it's not thrilling. It's not an amazing game, but these problems all exist on Windows as well. Uh, because unfortunately it's not massively optimized there's all these it seems like like any like square enix are really good at creating games <laughs> that run great on console and then the pc ports are just a, an afterthought completely and that, that makes me a little bit sad but still i had such a great time with this game i'll forgive most things um the game did not crash once on me i had no crashes however at one point after i'd had a particularly long play session where i think i played for nearly 10 hours straight i uh, i did have some audio corruption um and it, i couldn't work out whether it was the game fucking with me or it was a wine crash um and because the game uses save points rather than automatic saves which sounds annoying but really does lend itself to the way it tells its stories believe me um yeah i had to wait till i found a save point the next thing come back and i was like oh it wasn't the game fucking with me um which <laughs> is just wonderful uh, the spectacles, the visual spectacles the game has on offer as well, um, are epic. At one point, I'm fighting a big thing in the sea, is all I'm going to say, and it is literally a building-sized enemy. And the game's frame rate didn't drop particularly, it just went to the lower end of what I was used to, about 45, while the fight was happening. And the fight itself was wonderful, and wonderfully put together, and used all sorts of, of different gameplay styles to accomplish the, the, the whole battle. But um, I did, yeah, and th that was the one where I thought this is going to kill my friend, and it didn't, which is which is good. So it's not it's not the worst port I've ever played because I have played Dark Souls, um, but it's definitely not the best either. Uh, yeah, I can't. I'm unable to say a lot more about this game because unfortunately, spoilers are things that I really think you should avoid for this game. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to say the soundtrack was excellent and hit wonderful emotional notes. Um, while being quite upbeat um, the game could quite easily be again because of the story the game could quite easily be depressing but i found it to be oddly optimistic i think almost like subversively optimistic that's not a word you know what i mean though i feel like it's optimistic in spite of all the the dark almost depressing things that happen in it it's still really optimistic inside that which is interesting and i could probably talk for a lot more than these eight minutes about this game but i would say if you like the look of it and you think a third person brawler that subverts expectations is something you like and you're interested in the story and you're willing to jump in wholeheartedly to this story i don't think there are many games out there better than this one um i think it's it does appeal to a niche audience um even though it's a triple a title it's a triple a title that somehow has all the hallmarks of an amazing indie titles i play you know all those all those indie titles you play you say things like they're, they're not scared to do something different they're not scared to subvert they're not scared to to take the plot in a way they think people might not like and and they do interesting things with gameplay all the things you usually apply to an indie game all the sentences that would almost always refer to a great indie title refer to this game. And this is one of those big budget titles from a large studio where you'd expect them to take no risks. And all they have done is do things in ways you don't expect. Honestly, this is a, this is a triple A game only in the fact that it's made by Square Enix. Everything else about this is such wonderfully indie. And I think that's why I enjoyed it so much because it's so far away from that. From my expectations, I should say. Uh, yeah, all in all, great game. Can't really say, yeah, can't say much more. Uh, so I'm going to leave you to, you know, look at the footage I've played while I've been talking here. And hopefully you'll dip in. You know, you'll dip in if you see it cheap or you'll go, sorry, I'll play it at full price because Hex is great. Because honestly, if I'd, have spent, if I'd have spent £40 for this game, I would not have felt disappointed. I was glad to get a discount though, because obviously £40 is a lot of money for a game that's been out over a year. Thank you for watching. I've been Hex DSL and this has been Nier Autonomata. Why is it so hard to say? 
automata. Why do I, I just? I have to read it every time. I have to stare at the screen every time I say it. Near automata. See, I did it again. God damn it. 